Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and another episode of Real Estate Exam Prep where I break down the information that's gonna be on the exam so you can pass on the first try. So today's lesson, we're gonna get into water rights or better known as riparian and littoral rights. So I'm gonna break those down for you so that way when you see them on the exam, easy peasy. So the first one we have is gonna be riparian rights. Now, when you hear riparian, the R, think of running water. Think of a stream, a river, because these are rights that are going to be any property that abuts a river or a stream, anything that has running water. So here's the key with riparian rights. If you have two properties that are next to each other, and I'd say the property line is the river, okay? If the water is non-navigable, so what does that mean? That means you can't, can't use a canoe on it, can't put a boat on it. You know, the water's probably like, you know, below your knees, you kind of, kind of walk on it. So it's non-navigable, can't put a vessel on it, right? If that's the case, then you and the other owner will own up to the center line of the river and the land underneath it. And that's important because if you're in an area where you have minerals, like maybe gold, right? That's in the river, then that gold belongs to you. But if that river is navigable, you can go rafting on it, put, you know, go down with a canoe um, or a boat if it's bigger then guess what? You only own until the banks of the river and the state owns the land underneath. That's how they get you. All right, so next we have littoral rights. Now, when you think of littoral rights, think of L for large bodies of water. So great ponds, lakes, um, tidal water, right? The ocean, that's a great body of water. So this is gonna be um, your property rights of any property that abuts a large body of water. And what a butts means is that the property line just goes right next to the water, right? It's either, um, it's either next to it or it might be part of your property too, okay? Now, the way that works is typically your ownership is gonna be to the shoreline or the mean high water mark. And I'll give you a little chart where, you know, you kind of see how that's, that's, you know, derived. You don't need to know how to come up with the high water mark and all that stuff for the exam. That's all, you know, um, extra level stuff, you don't need to know that, um, but just so you can get an idea of, of you know what they're referring to. We'll also see how typically it's marked. So sometimes you might see like a, a stake or, or something like, you know, in the sand that shows that this is where the, you know, um, the, the property line is. Now for, for large bodies of water, lakes, great ponds that are 10 acres or more, that automatically is gonna be under the control of the state. They're gonna control that. However, if that pond or that lake is fully contained within your property, so you have a 20 acre lot and you have a 10 acre pond or lake, that's your pond, that's your lake. Okay, so you own it. The only you know restrictions you'll have would be your state environmental code, right? So you may not be able to do certain things or what have you, you know, depending on that. But other than that, it's a private lake, private pond, that it, it's it's pretty much yours. Now, included in littoral rights, we also have waterfront property rights, and we're talking more about tidal waters. Um, so if your property abuts an ocean, you know, a sea, um, then your rules are a little bit different. So typically, you're going to own to the mean low water line, or it could be 100 rods below. Now, a rod is 16 and a half feet. Um, you actually might see that on the exam, okay? So if your property, if you have a beach where you have sand and then, you know, you can kind of see the shore and and, and you have a beach, well then you're gonna probably, your, your line is most likely gonna be the mean low water line, okay? If you have a property where it kind of, there's a drop off like a cliff, right? Where, you know, you, you don't have a beach, but you're, you're seaside and, and just the water goes down, then at that point, they'll probably use the 100 rods below. Whichever is gonna be less is what they're gonna give you. They're not gonna give you any more. So whichever is less, either the mean low water line or 100 rods, below depending on how uh, the sea level is where you are all right folks well that's it that's the riparian rights and littoral rights now there are some other definitions that you should be aware of pertaining to water rights um, that you might see on the exam so erosion is one of the words that you might see on the exam and, and we're probably familiar with erosion right from grade school it's the gradual wearing away of land by by nature you know rain water comes in and it just you know it pulls dirt away. Um, I guess the best example of erosion will be the Grand Canyon, right? If you look at that, that was erosion throughout, you know, centuries and so forth. So erosion. So another word that you might see on the exam is accretion, right? 
An accretion is going to be the gradual deposit of soil through, through the operation of nature. So think of erosion, where if that dirt is being pulled away from somewhere, well, it has to end up somewhere, right, downstream. That's going to be the accretion. So accretion is kind of the opposite of erosion. Another term you might see on the exam is avulsion. Now, avulsion is going to be the sudden loss of land or addition of land that results from the action of water. Now, that could be something like a uh, storm is coming out of New England, right? And where you have you know, these giant waves come and they, they, they just take chunks out of the shore, right? That would be considered avulsion. Um, or if, you know, rivers that kind of just, just grow, you know, they, they, they swell up and, and, and they take land, that would be considered avulsion as well. Now, on the flip side to avulsion is reliction. And reliction is going to be the gradual recession of water that results in dry land. And typically, it's going to be permanent, right? So when you hear of lakes drying up and so forth, that's reliction. And finally, the last term you might see on there is the doctrine of prior appropriation. Yes, remember this one. They like to throw this one in because most people forget about it. So the doctrine of prior appropriation, what it does is in areas where water is scarce. So like usually, you know, Western um, US or Midwest. So you're looking at the parts of Texas, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, things like that, where, where there's not a lot of water. The government, the state controls the water, right? You're able to use it for domestic purposes, but if you want to use the water for agriculture or anything else, you have to ask for permission. Um, now you might see it later on as, you know, first time, first right, that type of stuff. Don't worry about that. When you see that, that's really more advanced stuff. Um, I don't even think it's on the broker's exam. Um, so if you're really into water rights, then that's when that comes in. But as far as exam purposes, that's what you need to know as far as the doctrine of prior appropriation. It's controlled by the government for areas where water is scarce. And if you want to use the water for anything other than domestic purposes, you got to ask permission. Well, there you have it, folks. That's what you need to know as far as the water rights. So there's your littoral and your riparian rights. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll certainly get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe and like. I really appreciate it. Um, and also, if there's something you'd like to see on the channel, please let me know. I'm working on videos all the time, and I'll be more than happy to do something for you. Um, or even if you have just specific questions, I'll answer in the video. No problem. All right, folks. Well, thank you. And um, until next time.